Okay, guys, this video's kind of making me a little bit nervous because just the thought, just the mention of the word record and some little fat version is going to come up to you and start lecturing you on what immutability is and why you should use records. It's a hot topic. But what's got these little incels all riled up? Why is it that everybody who's into records just really is into records? What most people will claim is that records are immutable classes. The reason that we use them is because of immutability. And that is absolutely true. But once we start digging deeper, we expose all types of secrets. And what's that secret? The secret is, is that it depends on how you make records. And records can be made in a way that they are indistinguishable from regular classes. But I will admit, these hipsters do have a point. Whenever we use records in the one-line fashion, which is 90% of the time why you're going to actually use a record, they are going to be immutable. And the whole entire reason that we do use records is because of immutability. The best way to describe the difference between a record and a class is to compare meal prep Tupperware containers versus 19th century silver. A meal prep Tupperware container is meant to be used at least one time, or maybe at most you use it for two weeks and then it kind of gets gross and you throw it out. Versus 19th century silver, which is very ceremonial. It's going to last a very long time and it is going to be used quite extensively. Another reason that this concept is important is because it describes immutability. The 19th century silver can be changed. You could take the dragons off of it. You could boil it down and there's still value inside of it. And silver in itself is very malleable. But on the other hand, meal prep Tupperware containers are very unchangeable. If this Tupperware container cracks or it gets too gross, you just throw it out. And there's beauty in that. So what we're going to do to really solidify the concept of a record and how records work is we're going to take a piece of quote unquote 19th century silver, this silver plate right here, and we're going to slowly but surely turn it into a Tupperware container, an immutable record. The way that we turn a class into a record is that we simply just remove the class. If you want to turn a class into a record, you can just go up here, put the word record instead of class, and congratulations, you have a record. But the bad thing is, is that we just changed the key word. We didn't really actually change the immutability of it. We can even go inside of here and we can change these sets to init. And this is actually going to create an immutable class. But why would we even use a record when we could just go up here and have a class of the same type? And you would be correct in wondering that. The real reason that we use records is for something called positional syntax. We can take this fully fleshed out class slash record right here. And what we can turn it into is something that looks like this. Instead of having to add all of those properties, we put it in what's called a positional constructor. So we don't have to type everything out. We can get immutability and we can put everything on one line. And when we do this, we get something that looks very much like a class. And instead of having to go through all of the ceremony of classes, we can just quickly make immutable objects whenever we want to. And the best part of all is instead of having a bunch of files for each and every class for things like DTOs, what we can do is we can place many records within the same file and we can quickly condense down all of these folders right here. Another great thing about records is that you can just place them at the bottom of a file if you want to. You don't even technically have to go through all of the trouble of making separate files and folders just like I have right here. But there is one huge drawback and you probably already know this but I'm just going to mention it anyway. Records are never to be used with Entity Framework Core. Whenever you are using 
a database or whenever you're storing objects into a database directly, as in you are directly interacting with entity framework core, records are not going to be able to be used because of they're in fact immutable. And entity framework core is designed for mutable objects, but everything else is fair game. But let's go ahead, let's hop into VS Code and let's get some practice in. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually create a record with beautiful positional syntax, the most likely type of record that you're going to make. And it's going to be a very simple one-liner because I, everybody loves a nice little one-liner. So what we're going to do is we're also going to place in the arguments that we want as well too. And just remember that this syntax does look a little funny, but all this is going to do is create properties for us, just like we would have in classes, but it's going to be placed inside of here and not within the actual properties like you would see in a class. So this syntax does look a little funny, but that's all that's going on here. And it's also going to be immutable, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. So what we have is we have an array of string for the phone numbers as well too. We're gonna to store the first name, we're gonna store the last name, and we're going to store the phone number. What we want to do here is we're going to just go up to here. We're going to create our very first person. I'm just gonna call this person one, and we're going to go ahead and new it up. Now, remember that when you actually use this positional constructor or the constructor that you use within an actual record, you're going to have to initialize it with this data. And that makes 100% sense because if you're going to create a mutable object, you absolutely want to put the data beforehand in because if it's immutable, you don't want to be changing it. Otherwise, you would just use a class. So what we're gonna do is my first name, I'm just gonna do two teddies and you can go ahead and put your name in there as well too. And I'm also going to put my phone number as well too. And this is definitely going to be my real phone number. So just make sure to give it a call if you want to. And this phone number is going to be 555, actually I need to put quotes around it because it's a string, so it's going to be 555. And also, if you don't know what this bracket is doing, it's creating a string with one place in memory for it so that we can actually store it. And that's how you actually create the uh, places in memory for an array. So we're gonna do the same exact thing, but this is going to be person two. And we're going to make them the same because we're also going to have to talk about equality in a second. and. This one, um, let's just see here. We're going to leave the phone numbers exactly the same. So what I'm going to go and do down here is first things first, we're gonna talk about immutability. We need to talk about immutability for a second and we need to see what we can and cannot do. So, and the immutability with records is actually a little bit different. It's something called shallow immutability. So I'm gonna go bring down my first person right here and what we're gonna do is we're going to try to change the last name and watch what happens when I try to change it. What's going to happen is you're not going to be able to and you're also going to get this crazy error. Whenever you ever see this init only property indexer, it basically means you're trying to change something that's immutable. And we also saw this in the case of strings because strings are also immutable as well too, but this is where things get a little wacky. This is where things get a little crazy. What we're going to do is we're going to go into here and let's try to change the phone number. Well, let's, let's see what happens when we try to change the phone number. This is kind of a trick question. We'll try to change uh, the very first place in memory and we're going to change this to 222 uh, dash 222 right here and go ahead bring that over and I need to get that P out of there. And lo and behold, you can actually change the array. What 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 the hell, Teddy? You told me everything's immutable. Immutable. This is actually what's called shallow immutability, and this is very similar to job the const keyword in JavaScript. What it's basically going to do is it's going to ensure that the actual data type for reference types are not changing. It's only going to enforce type changes, but it is going to allow you to actually change the internal phone numbers for this array of strings right here, or this string array. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about equality. And equality is going to be very important in records because it's another huge reason that we use them. And just to get this code to run, I'm gonna get rid of 
this right here and go ahead and set things up. So console dot right line and we are going to compare person one is equal to person two. And just by looking at this person one versus person two, as you probably guessed, since we changed it right here and we run dot net watch run, it's going to be false. The phone number is not going to be the exact same, but there's a lot more depth to this than one might imagine because records are going to compare things by value type and referential type compared to classes which are totally referential. And this is kind of the beauty of it. So equality is going to be compared by value type by referential type. And what by value type means is first that it's going to check the type. So if we go and if we compare things by value, we check the type and number two, we check the contents. And this only compares to value types, which are going to be things like uh, numbers, strings. The second is going to be the referential type. Whenever we compare things by referential type, we're going to compare it in the same way that we compare it in classes, which is going to be by memory. When Whenever you try to compare two classes, it's going to compare it by referential type, and it's just going to check the memory, and it's more specifically going to check the hex code that you get back from when it actually puts it on the heap. So if we have a record, it's going to compare it by value type and referential type. And that's the reason that our previous version didn't actually run because whenever we compare things or whenever we compare arrays, it's going to be in a totally different place in memory. So it's going to be a referential type. But when we do things like strings, it's actually going to check the content, check the contents, and it's also going to check the type. And the reason our person one and our person two didn't run is because we have two referential types that are in two places in memory. And watch what happens when I go ahead and get rid of these. It's going to actually be able to run it. And I'm going to go ahead down here. I'm also going to get rid of the string of numbers. And we're also going to have to get rid of this because it's not going to be able to run it. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, comment this out and watch what happens when we try to actually compare it now It's going to actually be true and if we change this maybe I change this to a lowercase right here What you're going to notice is that it's going to return false because it's going to actually check the contents of a string compared to a Referential type where it's not going to do that and just remember it's a combination of both compared to classes where It's just going to check things by referential memory and lastly, because we can't change records, we have to actually be able to copy records in a non-destructive way. And really all that this means is because we can't change anything, whenever we want to create a brand new object, we're going to have to copy it. And that's really all a just non-destructive mutation actually really is. It's just a copy at the end of the day because if we're creating objects that can't be changed, we can't just we can't just change them at our will. We have to actually be able to copy things over and that's kind of done by design. So we're going to call this person three. So what if I want to create a new person, but I don't want to go through all of the hassle of just br typing everything out over again. Our objects are going to get really big and what we can do is we can just go into here and instead of actually creating a brand new record that we did before, let's just say I want to change my last name to Teddy Bruschi and I don't want to have the last name Smith, but I need to create this object over again. What you can do is you can just use the word with and we can change this over to Teddy Bruschi, just like this. And I'm going to go ahead, put a semicolon at the end and let's just see what we have here. So I'm going to go into here console.write line and we'll go person three and I'm going to change this. We'll just go ahead, change this to string and let's go ahead and console log it out and let's just see what we have. Yes, we've totally copied over the old object. I didn't have to type Teddy back out again and I changed my last name to Brewski. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button and as always, thank you for watching.